In this video, I travel 60 miles out into the middle of the ocean in this little rinky-dink boat to try to find a secret fishing spot. And I almost drowned in the process. But first, I'm about to shoot a wahoo with my spear gun. Right away, I could tell. That's not a great shot. So I loosened my reel and let the fish pull out as much of my line as it wanted. But as the reel ran out of line, I felt one last tug from the fish and the line went slack and my heart sank because that meant that the spear had torn right through the fish and it escaped. I hate it when that happens. After catching a few other fish, I eventually came across some more wahoo. And this time I was patient and waited until the fish presented a perfect shot. Now that's more like it. Lights out immediately. Fishing adventures like these are only possible because the island of Bali is surrounded by these bamboo rafts. These rafts are called rumpons, which literally translated from Indonesian means fish home. And there are thousands of them surrounding the island. But not all of these rumpons are created equal. Some of them are barren and some of them are absolutely teeming with life. As a general rule, the further you travel from shore, the bigger and more abundant the fish at the rumpons get. Let me show you what I'm talking about. Okay, this is the shore. This is my boat. And just past the boat here are some rumpons. But these rumpons suck. They're too close to shore and are extremely easy for fishermen to access. And so, they're overfished. The rumpons where I speared those wahoo at the beginning of this video are about 15 miles from shore. And those rumpons are pretty fishy. However, there were rumors of some legendary rumpons over 60 miles from shore, and apparently they have the biggest and best fish. And I needed to find them. I live here, my rumpons are here, and those legendary rumpons are somewhere around here. But it's not like I could just drive my boat 60 miles from shore and look for them. It would be like finding a needle in a haystack. I needed the GPS coordinates, which luckily my friend Andre, who owns the company Andre Spear Guns, was kind enough to share with me. And if you're interested, these are the coordinates. Just kidding. Did you really think I was gonna give you those coordinates? Anyways, we loaded up 200 liters of fuel into the front of the boat, and at 5 o'clock the next morning, we began our journey. An excursion like this is pretty dangerous, especially on a small boat like mine. There's no cell service out there in the middle of the ocean, and so if something were to go wrong, we'd be totally on our own. Which is why we brought a backup engine. And in addition to not having any cell reception, there also weren't any toilets. And so, when I had to take a shit, I hopped in the water, and did so. And my buddy kindly snapped a few photos of the traumatic experience. And no, I didn't wipe. Four hours later, we had coffee and breakfast on the boat out in the middle of the ocean and finally began fishing. And that was when things started to go wrong. But first, a word from our sponsors. This video is sponsored by Skillshare. What? This video is sponsored by Skillshare. Skillshare is an online learning community with thousands of classes for creative and curious people. I just invested in a proper camera, and then I realized that I have absolutely no idea how to use it. So I just started the class Cinematography Basics, taught by Zach Mulligan, who's an accomplished filmmaker, and unlike me, he actually knows how to use a camera. Skillshare is curated specifically for learning efficiently, meaning there are no ads when you take their classes, and they're constantly launching new ones, so when you finish one class, Class, there will always be plenty more to choose from. Even if you aren't interested in filmmaking, they have courses on all kinds of things, like creative writing, photography, web design, marketing, and much, much more. The first 1,000 of my subscribers to click the link in the description will get a one-month free trial of Skillshare so you can start exploring your creativity today. Okay, back to the video. At first, I was a bit disappointed. There weren't that many fish around. Unfortunately, sometimes that's just how it goes. But I decided to take a deep dive to see if there was more life down below, which is what I'm doing now. And although I did already post a short 60 second video about this particular dive, I feel like I didn't really have enough time in that short video to give a proper explanation as to what exactly happened. So here goes. At about 80 feet, I find a good sized rainbow runner. I know that if I shoot it, it's going to get tangled on that rope. But we'd traveled such a long way to get here, and it really was the only fish around. So I said, fuck it, and pulled the trigger. Okay. 
During my long swim up to the surface, I had plenty of time to think about the stupid decision I had just made. Although I can freedive much deeper than 80 feet, it's a different story to do it while spearfishing. It's a lot more difficult. Here you can see me looking up to see how far away the surface is. Oh f I think to myself. Big rainbow runner, oh. tangled up at 25 meters on the line. I immediately dove back down, but couldn't make it all the way to the fish. That beeping sound is the depth alarm on my dive computer, 85 feet. That means the fish is even deeper now. In free diving, relaxation is the most important thing. If you're not relaxed, you won't dive very deep or very long and I could not have been less relaxed. And I didn't just need to dive down there. I also needed to spend some time untangling the fish after I arrived. Ah, oh, sh**. Huh? It's changing depths. Sometimes 20 meters. That time was 28. Oh, so I returned to the surface, put my spear gun on the rump on, and relaxed for a few minutes, and then tried again. And by the time I reached the fish, I already wanted to breathe. Normally, I feel totally fine 30 seconds into a dive, but I was way too excited, and my lack of relaxation was making things much more difficult. There goes my depth alarm again. There was no way in the world I was going to untangle that line. I wanted to breathe too badly. So I just cut it with my knife and began my ascent. I could immediately tell that this was not going to be easy. The fish was bigger than I thought, probably around 8 or 10 pounds. And in addition to the added weight, it created a huge amount of drag in the water. And in addition to that, I stupidly didn't stab the fish in the brain while I was down there, so it was actively fighting against me as well. The combination of all of these factors made me decide to drop my weight belt. It's a really nice belt made by Alchemy in Greece, and it costs like 30 or $40. But I was freaking out and had to choose between the fish and the belt. I chose the fish. My dive buddy saw that I was struggling and met me at about 30 feet and took the fish. Finally, sweet, sweet oxygen. I wasn't actually in any real danger of drowning during this dive. My dive time was only about a minute and a half, and I could dive much longer than that. And my buddy was there to keep an eye on me. The struggle during this dive was totally mental. Although, having said that, I guess that all struggles are mental. A few days later, we filleted the fish and ate it. And I can honestly say that I have never worked so hard for a meal in my entire life. Mm, so delicious. Do you want one?